Hello fellow Star Wars fans, it's Star Raptor here. Welcome to the channel. I offer tons of content on this channel including movies, games, and more. But I am talking about Star Wars today because it is Wednesday and that means it's another episode for this week in Star Wars Canada. So if you're familiar with what I do, every week I talk about the latest in Star Wars continuity. This could be anything such as the TV series, the comics, the novels, and the video games. This week we had two new Marvel comics. The first one I want to talk about is a long way to conclusion to the Darth Maul miniseries. That's right, this is Darth Maul number five. I will be talking about some spoilers in this one, guys. So make sure that if you don't mind the spoilers, to keep on watching. If you do mind them, you might, might want to skip ahead a little bit. So this is what it all comes down to. This whole miniseries was about Darth Maul quenching his Jedi slaying a thirst. He went against the will of, of Palpatine and wanted to take out his first Jedi. So to do that, he goes to this gathering where they're auctioning off this Jedi Padawan. Turns out he actually hired the help of bounty hunters Cad Bane, Arsing, and, and a couple others to get this job done. They end up crashing to the planet where they were fighting off last issue all these pirates that Zex Drexus, who was the leader of this auction, basically sent down to get more money for these people um, so here we are we start off right where we want to start off which is Darth Maul fighting against this Padawan and wow is this basically a really spectacular fight uh, it goes on the whole comic pretty much there was a little bit of Cad Bane and R Singh who are trying to get their ship uh, trying to get away off the planet but this entire time we have Maul locked in combat with this Padawan and she is really meeting, you know, the, he met his match on this one. He was looking for a Jedi, and this one's putting up probably more of a fight. And here's where my spoiler alert is going to be. So Maul does end up killing her, right? And, well, it was probably kind of a cheap hit because he, he jumps out of these rocks and stabs her at the last minute. But up until that point, she was going to leave him there probably to die or whatever. Um, so we do see Maul returning to Palpatine. And the whole time, Palpatine actually knew what he was doing. And I knew that would probably happen because Palpatine is always a step ahead of everybody. He had planted the seeds for Maul to go out there. And Maul learned a very great lesson by the end of this miniseries was that his quench for Jedi slaying will never be undone. He just got to keep going and going and going. So this sets up uh, the Phantom Menace pretty well with how he ends up going after Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. So that pretty much does uh, a wrap up on this issue. I'm going to talk about things I particularly enjoyed. First off, I really liked seeing that dialogue between Maul and the Padawan. And I think it was something, her name's Eldra, I believe. Um interesting because she was very much even though she's a padawan she had a lot of aggression about her and even at one point maul's thinking to himself like huh i could actually try to turn her to the dark side but then he's also thinking that wouldn't really work because well palpatine would know and there could only be a master and an apprentice the rule of two put in place by my favorite darth bane so that was something interesting and and how she was really meeting his match um he was meeting his match Another thing I want to talk about is Cad Bane and Singh. Yeah, they didn't have too much action in this miniseries as a whole. Uh, in this particular issue, is pretty badass seeing Cad Bane tossing those grenades and just taking out those two Trandoshans. Same thing with R Singh getting her blaster rifle, taking out those those Weequays, which is probably part of Hondo's gang, because I think there was Hondo at one of the issues in the background there. Um, also going back to Maul, I liked how he had this bloodlust that after he killed Ed Eldra, he ended up just slicing down one of these protocol droids, and then he goes and gets revenge on Zev Drexus, who was like the director of this entire auctioneer with the Padawan, and she calls him Sith, and that's his trigger, he just kills her right there, so the Sith will remain unknown until, well, we discover them, uh, and, and basically revenge the Sith. Um... Another thing I want to talk about is the artwork overall. It's really, really good. By it's it's, it's drawn by Ross. Uh, this guy does a fantastic job with the panels. Uh, you know, close-ups on different things like weapons and the characters' eyes. I thought Darth Maul looked really menacing in this entire comic because he's got these glowing eyes. And then at one point, uh, Eldra actually cuts off the upper part of his tunic, so he's, you see his tattooed body as you do in Rebels and Clone Wars, so it's really nice seeing those different kind of perspectives 
of Maul. So I'm just wrapping up this entire miniseries. My overall thoughts were, how does it fit in Star Wars? Is this something you guys should go out and read? Well, I think it is. I think this is something that I... You know, it does flesh out a bit of the character before Phantom Menace. It teaches him a great lesson of he's never going to, you know, quench his thirst, as I mentioned before. And you do get to see some nice little Easter eggs, such as, well, he's not really an Easter egg, but Cad Bane, you get to see R sing. So maybe Palpatine learns about, uh, you know, them through this, and that's how he hires them for the hollow cube or whatever he was trying to find in uh, the Clone Wars. Um, so yeah, it definitely lays the seeds, and again, the artwork is great, so I would recommend picking up the Maul miniseries, I'm not sure when it comes out, Marvel's pretty good about getting his trades out pretty soon thereafter. So the next thing I want to talk about is Poe Dameron number 17, this starts the new arc called the War Stories. So what happens in this, is there is a character that was back a couple issues ago in a one-shot her name is Sura Linda, and that's basically a journalist that was going to expose the Resistance, and when she went to the Resistance base on Dakar, back in that issue, she ends up seeing the good of the Resistance and decides she wants to enlist. So this whole time, she's basically somebody that's just cleaning things. She's like a janitor. And now it turns out that Poe actually wants to use her as help, because this overarching story of this issue is that Leia is saying that the resistance is starting to lose its support. It's, it needs more troops, it needs more ships, it needs more basically everything. So Sir Linda, as a journalist, has an idea that they should leak information to kind of give the resistance more credit. In doing so, they need to get some juicy pictures on the first order so they're gonna have to go behind lines and that's where Poe Dameron taps her as somebody that's going to be you know taking the video and whatnot so we have that going on in the meantime we have on the first order side of things with Agent Terex um, you have his his superior Malaris who is basically he, well actually it was um, Captain Fazza that has given him the implants. So they're around there, and her mission, Malaris' mission, is granted by Captain Phasma. Whatever needs necessary, means necessary, she's going to take out Poe Dammer because they have been causing the First Order way too much trouble. Their mission is straight out, they're going to just kill him. They're going to go find him and kill them, so Terex is trying to track them down. So, we also have Poe Dameron now, who has his own mission. He is going to go track down Adi, who is that one character that kind of was the traitor to them and let them have the First Order get them, but then they also betrayed the First Order at the same time. So it's a little bit of a mix-up kind of story. So you have Wex, uh, you have Snap Wexley, and then you have Poe Dameron, they're going off to find Adi. Then you have uh, Carrie, you have Sir Linda, and you have just Palva who are going to dig up some dirt on the First Order. That's basically this issue. Not much more happened with that. So things I liked specifically about this issue were more of the politics that were explored with the Resistance, particularly with Leia in there. I like seeing Leia so much in these comics, first off, and I think the artist does a great job rendering her. And, you know, we're just learning more about the politics because The Force Awakens really didn't do a great job of explaining what the uh, reality of the galaxy was with what was going on with the Resistance and what was going on with the actual New Republic. So it's nice seeing that the Resistance is still really a fledgling kind of entity that's struggling to maintain itself through resources. I did like seeing more background on characters such as Sir Linda who is this really interesting looking alien. She looks a very similar to somebody from Avatar, that blue skin type of alien. And we learn that her species is actually pretty close to extinction, and that is what's giving uh, Sir Linda that extra motivation to make sure that she succeeds. Her species is actually called a Squamatin. I hope I pronounced that right. And we do get a little bit of extra um, backstory on Jess Pava about how she really only likes to fly her own ships with her modifications because there was a little flashback with her and her family where they were flying this ship and almost got in an accident it looked like it wasn't very clear something else I want to talk about is the inclusion of a Y-Wing in the sequel trilogy era really cool I love the design of the Y-Wing and the only reason why they're using the Y-Wing is because it's got two seats and that's where Sir Linda is going to be a passenger on um, something I didn't really enjoy about this issue, which was kind of bizarre, was this whole scene, again, featuring Malar Commander Malaris, and, well, she was basically 
giving herself this like hyper steroid thing in her eye that made her apparently extra strong and it kind of hyped her up and apparently it like de-ages her so I think that's just a little bit too far it reminds me of something that like Marvel would do in one of their comics so didn't really dig that but that is going to do it for what I thought of Poe Dameron number 17 so I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk about what's coming out next week for you guys so next week we have the big novel release of Star Wars Battlefront 2 Inferno Squad this is the prequel story to the video game so it's going to follow the uh, the adventures, the formation of Inferno Squad, led by Aiden Versio. We also are going to get Dr. Afra number 10, so I can't wait for that. And finally, I want to give a great shout out to my friends over there at the Star Wars Underworld. So if you didn't notice, I'm wearing our t-shirt here. I have been following these guys for years now. I think since the acquisition of Lucasfilm back in 2012. It's hard to believe I've been following these guys for almost like five years at this point, I think. And what they are, they're primarily, they have a website, the StarWarsUnderworld.com. Check out, they have all the latest news. I follow them on Twitter and I get their updates every time they post. They do a really great job of aggregating all the news out there. They even have some spoilers that if you guys like spoilers, they're a great place to go for that. They also have a weekly podcast, the Star Wars Underworld podcast, where they talk about all the news that broke and just everything Star Wars, these guys talk about it. They're very knowledgeable, they're very energetic, and uh, you know, every week I look forward to listening to these guys. So make sure you check them out. Uh, I'm just really happy I finally can walk around and support these guys because it feels good, you know, giving a little bit of money their way for, with all the entertainment they provided to me. So make sure you check them out. So that's going to do it for another episode of This Week in Star Wars Canon. But I want to know what you guys thought of both of the comics that came out this week. Were you satisfied with the conclusion to the Darth Maul miniseries? And what do you think about the direction that Poe Dameron number 17 is taking? Let's talk about it in that comment section below. Also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I have plenty of other content including movies, TV, and games. This week I just started up my special series my recap of game of thrones it's just started its seventh season so i will be talking about every single episode i have a recap coming out probably on every monday i'm going to try to push them out so if you are a game of thrones fan you're going to want to check those out so that's going to do it for me here star raptor thank you guys for watching and may the force be with you always so did you like the video then make sure you rate it a thumbs up and if you did that go over there hit that star raptor head so you subscribe to my channel doing so will keep you up to speed on all of my latest content speaking of which you can see a couple of my recent uploads down below i'm also on social media so what are you waiting for let's start nerding out